Hello, it's Scott Manley here. This weekend, Arca Space once again returned in force to the internet with their new initiative called AMI. I presume that means Asteroid Mining Initiative because that's ultimately what they want this to fund. So yeah, Arca, you've probably seen them. They did this whole Flight of the Aerospike series, a very well produced YouTube video series about trying to build a linear aerospike in New Mexico. Unfortunately then, Dimitri had to leave the country after being accused of fraud and then found innocent and then headed back to Romania. And in Romania, they apparently had a hard time getting hold of high test hydrogen peroxide to do any rocket stuff. So they switched over to doing water rockets. And you know, you might think, okay, water rocket, I built those out of soda bottles and you know, high pressure uh, air. No, no, this is, this is slightly better than this, right? The water rocket is basically where it's really a steam rocket, right? You are heating the water to about 250 Celsius in this case. And the, you know, the vapor pressure at the, those temperatures is something like 30 to 40 atmospheres. So you have this in a insulated pressure vessel. You have a valve at the bottom, you open that up, and as that releases the pressure, it goes into a chamber, it expands the gas, the, the water, it flash boils, and then that steam, you flow through a throat and through a nozzle and you have a rocket. And it's, in some ways, it's incredibly simple. And you can actually get very, very high levels of thrust out of this, but the specific impulse, the performance, is really, really lousy. There's an argument, however, that it makes sense for a first stage. And that's what ARCA uh, were doing. They were doing something called the Eco Rocket. And it started out as like a one stage rocket with a second stage hydrogen peroxide thing. And I said they, that really wasn't going to work. And they kind of get mad. They, they responded in a very, you know, <laughs> okay, they responded to me specifically. And I, I'm going to say that one of their so-called criticisms of my video was pointing out that I had vastly overestimated the performance of their steam rocket. I'm not sure they realize that's the, I don't know, I'm not sure that's the burn they think it is. Uh, but I actually didn't have a problem with the idea of using, you know, steam rockets to boost a first stage and get it higher and faster so the second and third stages can go further. I did have problems with them, basically their marketing saying this is an eco rocket Water, it's so, you know, it's so benign, right? We shouldn't worry about it. We're not polluting. This is great. Uh, this is safe. Would you rather be on a rocket fueled by kerosene or a rocket fueled by boiling water? Let me tell you, having seen some steam explosions from high pressure vessels, you should not think of water at 250 Celsius as being benign or safe in any means. You know, you still treat it like a bomb but having said that, yeah, sure, you could make an argument that you could build a water-based rocket that would be less polluting. Uh, totally valid. Now, their current version, which is the Eco Rocket Demonstrator, has a first stage uh, that's water, a second stage that's water, and a third stage, which is hydrogen peroxide and kerosene. And that is supposed to ultimately put a 10 kilogram payload into orbit. This has been on the verge of flying for a very long time, but keeps on getting shifted. The latest, it was shifted because the airspace is now not safe because it is too close to Ukraine. Uh, okay, uh, I, I can believe that. There's been several other cases where it hasn't flown. They've flown tethered demonstrators at their launch site in Romania where it shoots up and it's not clear how long it's actually generating thrust for, but then they have big tethers that stop it from getting too high because apparently they have like a, a, a flight ceiling that they're allowed to use. Anyway, that isn't a ridiculous idea. Apparently they're not getting the amount of money they need for it, okay. But now their new one, this does definitely feel a little more stretching. I, I'll, I'll be clear, I don't think that like Arca and Dimitri are like scamming people. I think that, I think they're just really into building rockets and they're doing it with whatever they can. Like if you were trying to just like get money and like live life and whatever, why would you spend all this time building actual hardware? I mean, there are actually phantom rocket companies that, um, you know, putting out Photoshop rockets. This is not them. But yes, they're doing this, um, this, the Eco Rocket Heavy. And the Eco Rocket Heavy, boy, boy, does this double down on the, <laughs> on the steam rocket concept. So this is going to be something like 6,000 tons of rocket. It's going to be wider than it is tall. What they've got is 500, over 500 of these mini steam rockets. So it's like a, 350 kilogram 
pressure vessel with the nozzle and everything. You fill that with 10 tons of water and then you cluster 420 of them together into your first stage, right? And those all lifted up to about you know, Mach 1.5 or something like that. Inside that, you have another 90 of these. Again, each of these filled with 10 tons of high temperature, high pressure water. And that will then carry it higher and faster still. And then there's a third stage. This third stage is more, more like a, more, it's actually a chemical rocket. That's the words I'm looking for because it's using hydrogen peroxide and it's using kerosene that gets you good, your know, propellant density in terms of volume. That is supposed to carry the payload to orbit. And the payload to orbit is a 20 ton spacecraft, which is supposed to be able to go and mine asteroids. Okay, well, how much are you going to charge for this? They think uh, it'll cost about $75 million. And to be fair, they aren't living in the US. They're living in a place where the cost of living is a little different and lower. Um, that still, though, is missing a lot uh, of things. The other side of this is that they are going to fund this whole thing through a crypto token. Yes, uh, they, it, yeah, I'll tell you what, if they're looking for an energy source to heat that water, I've heard that, uh, you know, Bitcoin and crypto mining does generate a lot of heat. So, you know, you could certainly save a bit of power. Even better, if you want to make an ecological rocket, you could heat your water with solar power. And when it's not being used, you could run your crypto miners at the same time, right? And then use the heat to heat water. Like, it, it's, it all fits together if you think about it. Um, so actually, I did. I, I was. They're arguing that this is definitely cleaner and better than uh, something like a you know a traditional rocket. And I actually went out and I did the math. So if we look at the energy content of the rocket, and this is ignoring any efficiency losses at any stage in the process, I'm just talking about the amount of energy that is stored in the rocket that it's going to use to get to space. The Falcon 9 puts about 16 tons into orbit, right? And if you, you do the, the numbers on that, uh, the, each what is it? it has something like a 200 and something tons of kerosene and kerosene has 40 megajoules per kilogram. You get an energy of about seven terajoules inside a Falcon 9 when you look at the propellant. Now, if you take, if you take water and you heat it up to about 250 Celsius, then the energy input is about one gigajoule per ton. Uh, so now multiply that by the 540 steam boosters, you get 5.4 terajoules. Great. Now you have 30 of these uh, hydrogen peroxide rockets in there. And guess what? It gets up to about the same energy as a Falcon 9, but just any different form. Like water is very low energy density, but they have so much more of it that it turns out that it takes the same energy to power this rocket. <clears throat> now, you know, okay, so now we're going to power this off solar power. Well, again, let's do the math on this. If you're going to heat up, you know, 5.4 terajoules of energy and you're going to collect that via solar power and you can't trickle charge solar water. It's not like you can build it up slowly over time because it cools down at a certain point. You need to maintain your energy input high enough that it isn't cooling down. And, you know, if you take reasonable efficiencies, you're talking about a good fraction of a square kilometer of solar arrays to be able to power this thing heat this thing up in a reasonable time scale so it doesn't then cool down at night and you have to start again the next day. Uh, you know, that's quite a lot. And then, of course, it only works on sunny days. The, the, which, I'm going to be clear, they do actually say in their, um, their publication, there's a big 300-page publication I read, that they are going to use chemical heating. Well, what do you think chemical heating is? Well, you might say maybe you add something to the water to make it warm. I can't think of anything you can add to the water that has a sufficiently energetic chemical reaction to bring it up to 250 Celsius. I do think, however, you can burn, say, some hydrocarbon fuels like in a boiler with the atmosphere of you know, Earth's atmosphere and heat up the water that way. And then guess what? You're doing the same thing in terms of putting greenhouse gases and carbon footprint into the atmosphere as burning the same thing <laughs> in, in an actual rocket. Like, again, you know, there are advantages because if you think about it, sure, you're launching up 
and you're putting uh, the this Falcon 9 is putting these hydrocarbon exhausts and the other atmospheric products, the nitrogen, the oxides that form, that's going straight into the atmosphere. At least if you're doing this on the ground, you can control it with pollution controls a little easier. So there is that argument. But it doesn't seem like a huge win. And it seems like there's a lot of technology to develop. I think the Eco Rocket demonstrator, great. If you can get that to work, fantastic. Go for it. Eco Rocket Heavy, that is such a way out there idea. It is not going to execute on the amount of time that they claim, but you know, nothing ever does. Now, just for a second, imagine they do get it to orbit. The, the next thing is they have uh, 17 tons of water on this, I believe, to fuel their spacecraft. And they're going to use something called an arc rocket, which is, I think it's a solar powered system that basically flash heats water inside a cavity and exhausts it out through a nozzle. Now, there are actually, this is actually a legitimate thing. This is a concept that has been tested and can actually get pretty good performance. Now, I think the, the highest performing ones are all still patented and covered by protection, but you, you can build a rocket that way. So you can put enough Delta V in a vehicle to get it out to an asteroid. They would have to select the right kind of asteroid. They're talking about recovering platinum from asteroids. So you're going to want a metallic asteroid. It's going to get there lock on, like I did in Kerbal Space Program, by the way. A lot of this footage is, is basically me live streaming on Twitch last night. And it's going to use drills to break down the material and extract the high value elements. Now, here's the thing. They have no, nothing, no clues in their uh, publication about how they're actually going to select for the best thing. Remember, mass is very important. They're talking about a very small fraction of a uh, metallic asteroid being say platinum and somehow you have to mine tons of the material and extract just this part you want there's nothing in there a lot of material or min mineral extraction on earth uses huge amounts of chemicals which get circulated through a plant and reprocessed so they can extract the materials they want via chemistry they can't do that they don't have the mass budget to bring chem chemicals with them they do have a lot of power maybe they melt down the iron and then try to extract the material that way, but then you're going to need some way to do like gravitational separation or something. There is nothing in here about how that would work. That is like way out there. First of all, they've got to demonstrate that they can get their, their rocket flying. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, there are people that have pointed out, by the way, that some of the numbers that they put in their paper are wrong. <laughs> like literally in one of the things, they talk about the mass of the first stage and it's wrong, like in their own paper, very simple math. I, I think, uh, again, that doesn't mean that it can't work. It just means that they've made a basic math error at some point. Uh, yes, like it would be very easy to just go to town on this and rip it to shreds. But the truth is that like as an idea, using water as a pro you know, propellant for a first stage isn't the most ridiculous concept. It's just that there are many more uh, established concepts that are well tested and relatively cost effective. I do think it's kind of funny that they have this page, uh, this diagram, making out that they are doing the most high tech and innovative thing out here, when in fact, steam rockets were used to power cars. This is not a new idea. There was also someone else that set a land speed record in a steam rocket 10 years ago. And then, of course, you've got Mad Mike Hughes that, uh, well, steam rocketed himself into the ground, which is unfortunately very sad. I, I think an interesting point of comparison with another project that I'm often told is surely a scam is Spin Launch. Now, Spin Launch, they have a lot of money and they are actually doing interesting engineering and they're pushing right up against hard against engineering limits to do a lot of these things. Uh, Arca, on the other hand, they're pretty much using established you know, concepts and they're refining them in more or less what looks like a backyard operation with zero amount of money. They, they actually are closer to being able to do what they say with their you know, eco rocket demonstrator than uh, I, would, I would say the spin launch might be, who have many, many more difficult problems to do. But yeah, they, they just don't have the kind of funding to do that. And honestly, I don't think it would be sufficient of a revolution to justify putting a lot of money into it. I think what Arca need to do is actually fly some of the hardware that they've been building rather than changing the idea again to try and get more investors excited about things. 
uh, yeah, maybe once they fly their eco rocket first and second stage, they'll get to play with some hydrogen peroxide again and start at actually building some real rocket stages once more. But yeah, uh, I'm not hopeful of that, but I would love to be proven wrong. It's in your court, Dimitri. Good luck. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.